So what are you doing, Bev? Um, making life easier for us. It just doesn't look like it. Uh, one of the things you get is rubbish. And bottles, plastic bottles in particular, take up a lot of space. So what we do is we cut the tops off milk bottles and then we cut the other bottles up and put them inside the milk bottles. I've got five bottles inside this bottle, so these will easily fit, and that takes up a lot less room in storage till we get to recycling than four of those, three of those, and a couple of these. Because, I mean, there's two of those. Imagine another three of those all stacked up. You just take, you'd have bags of the things, whereas all, they all fit inside that. So, what I simply do, and I can't do too much with the tops because it's just the nature of the things. Um, but this is quite easy, you just cut the top off, cut the bottom off, there we go. It's not really a precision science, trust me on this. Split it up the middle, that's one done, and you just carry on like that. Okay, Gainer, so where are we and what have we been doing? Well, we're currently in Kinsale and um, Kinsale has got lots of different places that you can go. Uh, there is a, a decent anchorage. Uh, however, Beverly and I did foul our anchor there. I think there's foul, I think there's all mirrors in the bottom of that anchorage. Yes, but uh, we do have a tripping line and in some ways the tripping line helped us because it helped us get the anchor up, but in other ways it uh, hindered us because... It got caught up in the filing. <laughs> it got caught up in the filing, yeah. so it um, tangled uh, our chain and everything. Um, there's also moorings here and we were very grateful for those because after the uh, anchor incident we were on those. And on top of that there are two marinas. Uh, the one that we're in at the moment is Kinsale Yacht Club and that has great access to the town where you can buy lots of shopping, Lidl, um, Centra as well as a spa. On top of that you can actually get gas at the um, bicycle shop so you know you can get your essential supplies however fuel is at the other um, marina which is called castle park and beverly and i are going to go there in a minute because i want to be topped to the hilt as far as fuel is concerned
Beverly and I have really gone a good long distance today, didn't we, Bev? Yeah, we've pushed, we've pushed the boat out a whole five nautical miles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, we, and we've gone backwards. And we've gone backwards. Yeah. Uh, we came out of uh, Kinsale and I just looked at uh, the fact that I couldn't even see the head of Kinsale. No, I couldn't see the old head. Uh, it looked grey and it looked foggy. Everything to the west of us, which is the direction we're travelling, looked horrible. And uh, whereas Oysterhaven had the uh, recommendation that there was sunshine. Yeah, everything to the east of us had sunshine. Everything to the west of us had fog. So we thought, well, they were supposed to be going west. I got this for a game of cards. Let's go east. <laughs> so we've actually gone backwards. We passed Oyster Haven to go into Conceal last week, and now we've come back to Oyster Haven. A whole the entrance of the, the the Haven is like a whole two nautical miles from the entrance to Conceal, and then you've got to go up the, the thing and round the corner. So we've only gone two miles backward, and we don't really count that. It just means that when we're ready to continue our journey west, we just go out the entrance there and just aim for the old head and go. Yeah. Um... We did um, consider another little anchorage, didn't we, Beverly? We looked at Sandy Cove as we came past, but it had the same problems that Conceal was having, which was... Well, it was covered in fog. fog. And I, to be fair to Conceal, it was a great place, and we had, uh, you know, we got everything done that we wanted, and everyone we met was incredibly helpful to us, which is lovely. But the weather just didn't show it to its best. On the first day we were there, it looked absolutely lovely. And then on subsequent days we had storms coming through and then the final couple of days it was just solid fog and nowhere looks good in fog so poor old Kinsale did not get the best of press and it deserved better I think. I will say this though, um, the anchorages are pretty safe there. I mean mm -hmm. say so I know we got our anchor tangled but I think that's just a, a one-off. Yeah. Um, it was just what happened to us. Well, in, in four or five years of sailing, we've never had that happen. No, we haven't. So it just, it did get wrapped up with an old mooring as well. So We, we think there's an old mooring block down there uh, because in one direction of the tide, we were miles away from our mooring ball and the other direction of the tide, uh, we had the mooring ball practically under the stern. Uh, so we think that what was happening was as the chain, as the boat came around, the chain was wrapped around something down there. And um, it wasn't doing us any favour. And then it, it's picked up old ropes and all sorts of muck in the bottom. Yeah, it just, so... It just didn't do any good. Um, but um, we went into uh, the other marina to get fuel. We this, did this, would, this would be Castle Bay. This is Castle Bay to get fuel because that's where the fuel is. If you want access to the town, you go to Conceal Yacht Club. Because it's in the town. I mean, you walk out the gate and you're in the town. Whereas if you want diesel, you go to Castle Bay. Yeah, um, and um, they are doing um, a lot of uh, improvements. Um, he had um, decent uh, planking uh, that he was uh, going to be putting in. And he told us that um, he even filters the fuel as he's dispensing it and runs it through a diesel polisher as well. So he says his fuel is lovely and clean. Yeah, so um, good on him as far as I'm concerned. I wish, I wish more people did it. It would be great. So it would, it, it would, would really help um, uh, us yachties. It would, and he was very, very helpful to us. He was there to take lines and he told us where to go and what time to turn up at and all the rest of it. It was it was a very nice experience. I wish I had more time to spend at Castle Bay, actually. Yes, um, and even though uh, we had to raft, the um, line for the diesel was long enough that we could actually uh, just pump up. So. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, we... We had, we had a pleasant enough time in Conceal. We got everything done that we wanted to do in Conceal. Except maybe... Take some decent footage, footage for you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some beer the bit. So it's sad that it didn't get the weather it deserved. But it is what it is. We've now moved to Oyster Haven. And, you know, a change is as good as a rest. Um, we're here now and it's just lovely. I just like the fact that at the moment I can actually enjoy our cockpit without being cold. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid to say Beverly did keep her, her mouth closed on this. She thought that the summer was over. Uh, well, it just felt like the summer was over. We had a huge blow that 4-7 or something like that. We were, 
we were all right. We weren't bouncing around on the river or anything, but you know. Well, that's the good thing. It you was. don't want to, you don't want a four seven blow in the middle of summer and then two days of solid fog when you go out and everything just clings with dampness and chill. I mean, it's no fun. Well, exactly, and that's why I wasn't out in the cockpit. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just felt like summer had ended, but I knew if I said anything to Madam, she'd bite the head off me, so I kept my gob shut. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the optimist of us too. <laughs> but yeah, it's just nice to be somewhere different mm. and just look at a different scenery. And mm -hmm. I'm got a lovely big um, schooner just beside us, haven't we? This spirit of oyster here, very nice looking boat. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's it's kind of rigged, and I think it, it looks fast. I mean, with that, that flared by and the big counter on the stern. <sighs> yeah, well. Well, um, at the moment there's uh, not much wind. Um, so, and there's not going to be much wind for the next few days. So Beverly and I have been looking at the forecasts and things like that. Um, now, obviously, I would prefer to sail, but um, with there being not much wind, I'm thinking I'd rather be uh, at Baltimore, and that's where, it's one of the places that Beverly and I have been, you know, wanting to get to for a while. So what we've decided to do is, um, even if it's motoring, we've decided to do two short motor hops with, uh, you know, like motor for three or four hours, anchor, then motor again, rather than, if we can sail, brilliant, trust me, we are sailing, but yeah, just do a couple of motors, so there might not be much say uh, video coming up, but I just thought I'd tell you what it is that Beverly and I are planning. Right, well, okay, let's get this straightened up a bit. <laughs> right, so... Game is helming today, so that means I've got the crewing job, which um, means doing all the sheets and also making log entries and things like that. So what I've done on the log, and I know it's hard to read, but bear with me. I've got the tides here for conceal, and I've looked up, and the tides for Baltimore are exactly the same as conceal. I think they're about two minutes different. Well, two minutes neither here nor there. Uh, over here I've put the tides for Dover. Now I know Dover is a long way away from here. But the simple fact of the matter is that our pilotage that we bought, we bought in the UK and everything in our pilotage references Dover. So for tidal stream atlases and things like that, we need the Dover tides. So I've just put them in. I don't care about the tide height in Dover as I couldn't kill the monkeys because it's like 500 miles that way. So I've got those in. I have got in the forecasts. But the other thing I've done is on the chart, I have marked out approximate courses, times and distances. So I have a waypoint here, another one here, another one here, another one here. The first one gets us past the old head of conceal and it's on a bearing of 205 true. The next one then uh, has a, a distance of an hour and that has a bearing of 250 and the next one has another same bearing of 250 for another hour and so on. The hour is at five knots. Um, the tidal streams on here are supposed to be one to one and a half. So we're hoping for a bit of assist, but uh, we shall have to wait and see. One of the things that uh, Beverly and I recommend is that you keep your engine bay clean um, because what that allows you to do is if you have a, an oil leak or something like that then you can soon spot it and I'm afraid to say we do have the tiniest of oil leaks but uh, when I clean it this is all it's producing it looks more but it's a just a smear and um, so we've traced it back and it's in around the area of the Morse cable uh, probably a grommet has gone um, like with this um, oil though it's not much um, we don't haven't even needed to top up the oil yet but it is something we are going to have to address at the end of the season <laughs> 